Hello! Today you'll see a movie whose director spent so much money on groundbreaking special effects that the producers fired him from the film. The production was finished by a different director, which is the reason for some of Superman's weird and comical abilities that you definitely won't see in any other stories about the superhero. Ordinary guy Clark Kent is trying his best to win the attention of his colleague Lois Lane, but the woman is in love with the mighty Superman and has no idea who is hiding under the mask of the clumsy and timid journalist. Uh, excuse me, sir, I think you're sitting in my seat. Your seat's in there, poor eyes. Yet the man can't hide his secret for long, and the perceptive girl starts to realize why she never sees Superman and Clark in the same place at the same time. Things seem to be heading towards a happy ending, as Superman is even willing to give up his powers for the sake of love. Well, this is exactly what the villains, led by General Zod and Lex Luthor, have been waiting for. The time has come to conquer the planet Earth. Under the starlight, the crystalline planet Krypton awakens. A large white dome stands on its surface, inside which a man in black attacks a guard and breaks his neck. General Zod and his henchmen, Ursa, and the big but dim-witted Nan are about to overthrow the government. This, however, turns out to be a trap for the criminals, and they get arrested immediately. The trio are sentenced to banishment. Their souls are trapped in a mirrored prism, sending them far away into space. You will lie down before me, jor -El. Both you and them one day, jor -El. Zod curses the prosecutor who sentenced him and flies away helplessly into the lifeless expanse of the universe. Years later, jor -El's wife, with tears in her eyes, puts her son Kal-El into an escape pod and sends him far away from his home planet. Krypton is blown to pieces along with its red sun. The capsule arrives on Earth and lands in the fields. The baby crawls out, where a farmer and his wife find it. They adopt the child, naming him Clark, and discover his amazing abilities. The boy possesses superpowers. One day, insidious businessman Lex Luthor nearly destroys half of California and even found a way to deprive Superman of his abilities with a special kryptonite crystal. But the hero was able to turn back time and save humanity, along with his beloved journalist Lois Lane. Clark Kent shows up at the Daily Planet newsroom after a short vacation. No one pays any attention to the unsightly colleague who stops by to see his boss, Mr. White. He is given the task of writing about the terrorists who are holding hostages in the Eiffel Tower. If their demands are not met, they threaten to detonate a hydrogen bomb in the center of the city. Lois Lane has already landed in Paris to report on the situation. If Paris is gonna go gablooey, I want my best reporter right in the middle of it. But gee, Mr. White. Clark rushes out of the building and transforms himself into Superman to prevent the catastrophe. Meanwhile in Paris, Lois slips through a police cordon and climbs the Eiffel Tower to earn an award for her unique coverage of the story. She sees the criminals release some of the hostages in an elevator and crawls under the cabin to get to the higher floors with the criminals. She overhears the men planting a hydrogen bomb. In the meantime, French police officers are planning to storm the tower and plant explosives to bring down the elevator with the hydrogen bomb inside. They mistakenly believe that it does not yet have a detonator and set the plan in motion. The elevator begins to fall, threatening to blow up the city. Lois desperately tries to hold on. Suddenly, Superman shows up on the horizon flies into the shaft and catches the elevator, rescuing the girl. I believe this is your floor. Oh, thank God. How'd I get myself into this? But with less than a minute to go before the explosion, Superman pushes the elevator higher, taking it deep into space. The bomb explodes, causing no visible damage. However, the prism in which the Kryptonian rebels were trapped is floating nearby. The shockwave destroys it, releasing Zod and his accomplices, who decide to land on the moon. Back in Metropolis, Clark sees Lois on the other side of the road and hurries towards her right across the roadway. A cab crashes into him. The driver is surprised to see his car smashed to pieces and the pedestrian completely unharmed. They walk into the editorial office, where a girl berates Clark for his absent-mindedness and indecisiveness. The man hints that not all people can be as tough as Superman. The girl clearly likes Clark's alter ego better, and she has no idea they are the same person. The colleague, meanwhile, gets the status of a friend and bitterly realizes that he is hopelessly stuck in the friend zone, and for some reason he is unable to change the way he behaves without the superhero's tight suit. Meanwhile, Luther and his assistant, Otis, are serving two life sentences in prison. In the laundry room, they discuss the fact that Superman constantly flies far north. They don't yet know that the hero has built the Fortress of Solitude there, where he used to talk to a hologram of his parents and study the archives of his home planet with the help of memory crystals. Thus, Goofy Otis assumes that the hero simply likes to ski, 
Luther, on the other hand, is hatching a new plan of escape and revenge, and has already created a special radar in his cell to track Superman and find his weak spot. At this time, the first U.S.-Russian joint lunar mission takes place on the Earth's satellite. The astronaut jokes that they have become too close since the end of the Cold War. By the way, Boris and I are engaged. Yeah, I had a feeling about you guys when I saw your Rorschach tests. Suddenly, he sees Ursa flying through outer space without a spacesuit. She approaches his colleague on the surface of the moon and asks who he is. The girl is not satisfied with the answer that he is a mere human, and she tries to rip the NASA emblem off his spacesuit. The man does not manage to escape, and Ursa condemns him to death by breaching the spacesuit. With disgust, Zod kills the second lunar explorer, concluding that such a fragile life is not worthy to exist. The last surviving astronaut tries to escape, but Nan tears the ship apart with his bare hands. Houston loses contact with the mission without realizing what has happened. Zod and his minions are surprised by their new superpowers that have appeared under the yellow sun. Hearing the dying astronaut's last words, they go to the planet Houston to conquer it. In the meantime, Luther is carrying out his escape plan. Using a projector, he broadcasts a hologram of him playing chess with Otis and makes his way outside, where he is greeted by Miss Teschmacher in a hot air balloon. Luther manages to climb up the rope ladder, but as Otis attempts to do the same, the balloon is pulled to the ground. The boss cuts off the ladder, leaving his assistant imprisoned. He commands to fly straight north to learn Superman's secrets. Meanwhile, Lois and Clark check into a hotel near Niagara Falls. The owners lure young couples to this newlyweds paradise for their honeymoons and rob them of their money. Because of this, the journalists pretend to be honeymooners to expose the dirty schemes. The room is decorated in dull rows and Lois feels frustrated with the silly assignment. Clark, on the other hand, enjoys the role of the groom, and this way, wants to get closer to the girl. But as expected, Lois makes him sleep on the sofa. The next day, they go out to see the waterfall. Clark sees how all the couples are holding hands and convinces Lois to repeat after them. Hmm? They're afraid to let go. Why? They let go, straight to the lawyer. Lois calls her companion blind for the umpteenth time and takes off his glasses to wipe away the droplets. Clark protests, as it might expose him. He quickly takes them back but Lois manages to notice the familiar features in his face. Clark quickly diverts her attention and then leaves to bring food to now hungry Lois. While he's gone, a boy climbs over the observation deck railing and falls down. Lois cries out for help, and Superman comes out of nowhere to scoop the child up, rescuing him from the raging waters. The journalist, who has long been in love with the hero, tries to get his attention, but the man immediately flies away. Lois is frustrated and begins to wonder how he wound up at the waterfall. The girl also notes that Clark isn't around, and this happens every time that Superman shows up. When Clark returns, Lois begins to question him, but the man only awkwardly changes the subject. Meanwhile, Luther and Miss Teschmacher make their way to the Fortress of Solitude on a snowmobile, admiring the Kryptonian architecture. They go inside and find the control panel. Lara, the keeper of the archives and Superman's mother appears on the screens and answers Luther's questions about Krypton and the rebels locked inside the prism. The man is delighted to hear of three villains who possess the same power as his nemesis. Someone with the same wonderful contempt for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. South Miss Tessmacher! And at the waterfall, Lois finally blows her colleague's cover. She's even willing to risk her life to make the guy confess. <laughs> for a minute there, you almost had me convinced. For a minute. Bye bye, baby! The current carries the girl away. In panic, Clark runs along the bank, trying to help Lois without revealing his identity. He uses his heat vision to drop a thick tree branch into the water, and Lois grabs onto it. The girl swims towards the shore, and Clark runs up to her, again pretending to be as clumsy as possible. He falls into the water himself, and Lois is forced to drag him along. She feels like a complete fool for mistaking Clark for Superman. At this time, the three Kryptonians land on a quiet lake, Zod dives into the water for the first time and finds it to be very weird. He walks across the water, and a nearby fisherman's jaw drops from bewilderment. The trio moves on, discovering their new abilities. Using her gaze, Ursa easily sets fire to the snake that bit her. The slightly backward Nan is not yet able to replicate her success. In the hotel room, Lois is still feeling sorry for doing that silly prank. She was probably just too eager to see her beloved Superman standing in front of her. Clark, all too well used to his role as the loser, stumbles again and falls right into the fireplace. Fearing that he might get burned, Lois jumps up to help, but there's not a scratch on her colleague's hands. There's no more doubt. Clark stops slouching and takes off his glasses. Lois confesses her love for him. The feeling is mutual, so Superman wants to explain everything to the girl, 
and to do so, he flies with her to the Fortress of Solitude. The trio of evil aliens stumble upon a sheriff and his deputy on a country road. Mistaking the strangely dressed men for hippies, the cops try to drive them away. But Ursa takes yet another badge for her collection, and Zod uses heat vision to heat up and take the gun from the man's hands. The villain examines the weapon, accidentally shooting himself in the chest. Taking no damage, Zod throws away the crude noisemaker. Nan rips the red blinker off the sheriff's car, which reminds the aliens of the red sun on their home planet. They then make their way to a small town, where Nan again tries unsuccessfully to start fire with his gaze. Ursa and Zod walk into a diner, and the girl sees two people competing in an arm wrestling match. The winner flirts with her, and Ursa suggests that he tries to match her strength first. Let me know if this tickles. One of the redneck's friends wants to stand up for his buddy, but Zod tosses him back with a slight movement. The man flies through a wall and a truckload of chickens to the other side of the street. Zod lifts the next man, who gets in their way with a gun high into the air. The poor man's son begs Zod to stop, and he dismissively lets the man go. At the North Pole, Superman shows Lois the green crystal that arrived with him on Earth in the capsule. This device allowed him to erect the fortress, whose archive helps Superman discover his origins. The girl takes the crystal in her hands and notes that the guy's lair lacks a woman's touch. In response, Superman soars into the air, bringing a beautiful parrot from Hawaii and from France, champagne and gourmet food. Lois is surprised by the man's quick return and carelessly drops the green crystal on the snow. Meanwhile, news of aliens spreads across America and reporters arrive on the scene. Nan takes to studying their equipment like a caveman, while Zod asks how many people from the planet Houston see him on their screens. He is flattered that all of humanity is watching him, and he wants to make his presence known to them. He is interrupted by the military, who orders the aliens to surrender. Nan boasts that he has mastered heat vision and blows up the tires of the jeep, sending it flying through the store building. Zod repels the flamethrower attack, causing the flames to spread over the diner. The president is informed of the villains whose strength surpasses Superman's, and helicopters are dispatched to the city. The missiles prove useless as well, and Ursa blows the flying machines away with just her breath. Zod turns to the camera and asks if there is anyone on this planet who can truly challenge him. But Superman is busy having a romantic dinner with Lois. He tells her that he actually enjoys playing the part of Clark Kent, but he's glad that he doesn't have to do it now. He takes Lois by the hand, and she excuses herself to change into something more comfortable. Superman takes the opportunity to consult with his mother about his chosen one. Your father and I tried to anticipate your every question, kal -El. This is the one we hoped you would not ask. It turns out that if he wants to live his life with a mortal woman, he must give up his superpowers and turn into a human forever. There is a special device in the fortress to do so. Superman is willing to do anything for love and enters a crystal chamber that lights up with the red sun of Krypton. The control panel explodes and Lois is greeted by Clark Kent. The girl is touched by her lover's sacrifice and they get private on the crystal bed. And Zod, Ursa, and Nan continue to wreak havoc while Superman and Lois are sleeping peacefully, they demand that the President of the United States obey them, or all cities will be reduced to rubble. At Mount Rushmore, the aliens remake the President's faces into their own, and then attack the White House. They easily disperse the guards and enter the Oval Office, where they see an eagle emblem on the floor. I see you are practiced in worshipping things that fly. Good. The alien orders the President to kneel before Zod. The man obeys, after which Zod laughs at him, saying that a real leader would not have given up so quickly. Then the real president steps forward, revealing that a subordinate was simply trying to save him. If it saves people's lives, he's willing to take a knee too. The man proceeds to do so, saying that there is only one earthling who will never submit to Zod, but no one knows where he's gone. Clark and Lois are taking a long drive through Alaska. They drive into a diner, and Superman complains of back pain from hours of driving. The man retreats to the bathroom, and Lois starts getting hit on by a local brute. He tells Clark to go screw himself, and the guy invites him to settle this on the street. Clark turns his back, receiving a treacherous blow to the back of the head. Falling on a glass door, Superman cuts his hand and sees his own blood for the first time in his life. Lois helps her lover up, assuring him that she won't leave him in trouble. But the man wants to defend the lady's honor, and gets punched in the face again. Lois throws herself into the fight, jumping on her abuser and the guy walks away, not wanting to raise his hand to the girl. The owners turn on the TV, where the president announces that he is handing over his power to General Zod. In desperation, he interrupts his speech to call for Superman's help. 
Zod takes the microphone in his hands and once again challenges the only person who can face him. Beaten and bleeding, Clark blames himself for his reckless choice. He must regain his strength and heads north. Upon reaching the Fortress of Solitude, he approaches the ruined dashboard and begs his parents for help, but his cry only echoes off the silent crystal walls. Suddenly, he notices a green glow in the snow and finds the crystal that Lois had dropped. Inside the White House, the invaders plan their next move. To their surprise, impudent Lex Luthor shows up on their doorstep, thinking he can be of service to them. I, I can give you the brass ring, the uh, unlimited freedom to maim, kill, destroy. His bravado works, and in addition, Lex tells him that Jarrell's son, the same prosecutor that Zod wants to take revenge on, is on this planet. That's the same Superman who they should find and destroy. Only Luther knows where he's hiding. All the businessman asks for in return is to give him Australia, as he has a fondness for oceanfront real estate. Lois returns to the editorial office, where she discusses with her boss where Superman has gone. Suddenly, Nan bursts into the building, heading straight for them. He knocks out Mr. White for attempting to resist. Lois punches Ursa in the face, but this only makes the girl squirm in pain. Lex Luthor points to the journalist whom Superman always comes to rescue if the girl is in danger. Zod commands them to kill everybody else, including Luthor. Suddenly, a gust of wind is heard in the urban jungle, and Superman himself appears at the window. He proposes the villains to settle this outdoors. Zod is determined to make the hero kneel, and the invaders fly out after him. The citizens of Metropolis joyfully greet their savior. Zod strikes first, hurling a concrete wall at the enemy, but Superman blows it up with his heat vision. Then Nan punches and grabs the hero, but Ursa's attack lands on her partner, so the goon flies into the tower on top of the building. Superman catches the falling structure, saving a woman with a baby carriage. Zod points out their opponent's weakness. He actually cares for these Earth people. Like pets? I suppose so. The general starts blasting cars on the street with his eyes, and Superman reflects his beams back at him with a mirror, knocking Zod down. With his breath, he freezes a truck, which is about to explode. Nan jumps right on top of the enemy, and they crash through the pavement, ending up in the sewers. The street shudders from their underground battle, endangering passersby. Superman throws Nan outside, and the villain smashes through the buildings with his body. Ursa knocks Superman down with a throw of a manhole cover, and Zod joins the fight. He tries to overcome the hero, but loses the fight and flies into a billboard. Next, Nan and Ursa pick up a bus full of people and throw it at Superman. He doesn't manage to halt it, and the people start screaming that the hero is dead. Unwilling to surrender, passersby take up weapons, rocks and sticks, trying to fight off the invaders. But the trio uses their breath to simply blow all humans off the street. Cars and phone booths fly after them. Finally, Superman crawls out from under the bus and sees the destruction wrought by the battle. Even though Zod and the humans think that the hero's getting cold feet, he flies off to get the villains away from the city. The aliens are celebrating their victory, intending to deal with Superman later. But Luther provokes them. What do I get from my triple threat? Bow, yield, kneel. That kind of stuff closes out of town. Zod is about to kill Luther for such impudence, but the businessman offers to show him where Superman has gone. The Kryptonians grab Lois and Luther and fly north. Upon seeing the familiar architecture, Zod concludes that this is a pathetic replica of a long dead planet. Superman replies that he expected better manners from his guests. Nan immediately attacks, but the hero surprises everyone by throwing a huge emblem at him, which he rips off his chest. The Kryptonians attack Superman using lasers, but he reflects them back with his palm. The trio teleports through the fortress to take their opponent by surprise. In response, Superman confuses the enemies with his hologram copies and grabs Zod by the throat from behind. In retaliation, Ursa and Nan take Lois by the arms, threatening to tear her in half. Superman frees Zod, who demands that the hero become his eternal slave. In that case, he will spare the innocent Earthlings. But it's time to get rid of the insolent Luther. The businessman tries to wiggle out again, but this time there is no trump up his sleeve. Nevertheless, Lex takes advantage of the confusion to turn to Superman for rescue. The hero offers to lure the aliens into the crystal chamber to rob them of their powers. Of course, the trickster immediately turns Superman in and tells Zod about the plan. The general is pleased with the loyalty of the ruler of Australia and turns on the machine. Superman goes inside and is stripped of his powers again. He kneels before Zod and takes his hand to swear eternal loyalty. But then, the sound of cracking bones spreads through the fortress. The general screams in pain, 
and Superman lifts his enemy over his head and tosses him into a deep crevice. Non tries to save his boss and plunges after him, like a rock. Superman has changed the camera settings to take away the powers of everyone outside of it. Lois takes her sweet revenge on Ursa with a punch, and the girl goes flying down too, realizing that Superman has outwitted him too. Luther tries to make amends. He assures that he will start a new life if he is safely transported home, but the hero doesn't believe the scoundrel and leaves him at the North Pole. He brings Lois to Metropolis, where she promises not to reveal his identity to anyone. Can they be together if he doesn't give up his powers? The girl does not know what will happen next and bids a sad farewell to her lover. The next morning, Clark walks into Lois's office. She has been crying all night and compares the man's vocation to being a doctor. The doctor gets waking in the middle of the night and then the wife has to cope with the fact that he's gone. The girl doesn't want to let Clark go, but says she's simply being selfish and asks him not to think about her. She doesn't know if she will be able to hide her feelings in front of her colleagues forever. Clark doesn't know what to answer, but Lois asks him to simply say that he loves her. The man gently wipes away her tears and tenderly kisses her. This turns out to be Superman's new ability. Lois briefly loses consciousness, after which her memories of the last days are erased. Everything returns to normal, and the perky girl once again whips her clumsy colleague around. Clark finds time to visit a diner in Alaska, where the rude guy is once again bullying customers. It's time to teach him some manners. Clark lets the guy smack his hand against his iron press, then places him on a plate. This order's to go. <laughs> he pays for the damage to the cafe owner and explains that he has been working out. Afterwards, he returns the American flag to the roof of the White House and apologizes to the president for his long absence. He will always be on guard to save the world from new dangers. By the way, Many of the actors refuse to participate in the reshoots and are missing from the scenes that they were supposed to be in. Even Lex Luthor is not bald here, because the actor has refused to use the appropriate makeup. This is why his hair was styled to look like ridiculous wigs, as if Lex himself was trying to hide his baldness that way. Despite all this, Christopher Reeve, the lead actor, considered this Superman film the best one ever made, and the good box office and cult status of the film partially confirms his words. As always, look for the name of the movie in the video description. In the meantime, let us know in the comments, would you be able to live in the guise of a weak and disrespected human for the sake of a higher goal? And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video so that more awesome stories come out as often as possible.